today on Classic Truck Rescue. <clears throat> Class. Classic, Classic Truck, truck rescue. rescue. Welcome back to the channel. Didn't get that one, did you? I could have if I wanted to, but I know people don't like that. So. Some people like it. Some people don't. Some people don't. Anyways, today on Classic Truck Rescue, a much anticipated video. I've received hundreds of comments, literally, on my building. Most of them encouraging, but there are a few that have been really mean. And, uh, and that sucks, because you're one dude doing a job that a whole crew would do, and you're doing it by yourself, and you're doing and a great job. And while... While, and I'm doing it while. We have parties and we have to sell oh, stuff. I don't know about parties. Customers and stuff. Mowing, hoeing, no, rowing. That's your department. Fishing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I've just received a lot of comments about the building. Most of them encouraging. Thank you for those who have encouraged me to go back to work on it. Uh, the few people that that need to hear this are the people that said that my building will never be up. What do you think the odds are of them being right right now, Jamie, with what you know that nobody else knows? They need to quit being haters. And oh, but, but what do you think? Will my building never, never get built? It's getting built. Oh, why, why do you say that? Because I see it. Oh, oh, you don't get to see all of it. What you get to see is when I first went back to work on the building, one thing I have struggled with is the equipment that I'm using, right? It breaks down all the time. It's broke down while Jamie and I have tried to use it before. And as a matter of fact, one of them has an issue right now, but I'll fix it. That's what I do. I just keep fixing them and getting them running again. The bucket truck's working great in today's well, video. And it takes money to get them fixed because yeah. hundreds of dollars in hydraulic fluid and parts and batteries and time. I know. Anyway, in today's video, the bucket truck is working like a champ. It was a little grumpy on the startup, but I got it started and got done what I needed to do. This is video of the first day that I actually went back to work on the building. I've been cleaning up and organizing and stuff to get ready for this, but this is the first day that I actually go up and do something on the building. We won't get a lot done today. But I'll show you that we can get a lot done. And at this point, as you're viewing this, what's he doing? He's tripping on the horse. He's communicating with the guy. All the horses are going bonkers. <laughs> anyway, we're going back to work on the building. I just want to let you know, we're not gonna get a whole lot done in today's video, but we'll get a start. And at this point, I am confident that that building will be completed this winter and that it will have a roof on it before winter. I had ran into some issues with wood. You know, a lot of people were right saying things like, oh, your wood's gonna go bad and stuff like that. You're right. <laughs> I ran in, my wife's feeling a little spunky today. We're going, to, okay, that's what I wanted to say. And the most important thing I wanna say in today's video introduction is happy birthday Lou I was Jamie and I were talking to mom we were sitting right here talking to mom last night on the phone and we were asking what we could get Lou for his birthday and Lou's not doing well he's not he's not able to walk and my mom and Lou lives to read his newspaper my mom said he's not re reading his newspaper uh, part of another reason for me going back to work on the building is that Lou's biological son Jim passed and Jim worked with me on the building for about a month and a half when we first started working on it. Lou can't come out and work on it anymore. He's in mom's basement uh, but you know he's got a hospital bed and everything like that but he can't walk. That sounds bad though. When you say basement it's not a basement it's actually an it's extension nice. of their house. It's like a, a like a what do you call it? A den. It's like a den. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, it's nice, and, and he's got French doors that open up 
onto a patio that he can get in his mobile chair and we built him ramps so he can go down into the yard and stuff uh, but it's Lou's birthday tomorrow it's Sunday right now so I'm trying to cap this video off get it finished and uh, get it uploaded so that we can go over we couldn't think anything to get Lou he's got everything that he needs and there's you know his what he can do is limited right now so we'll stop and try to get him some magazines or something like that and a nice card but I thought it'd be cool if I had CTR 331 uh, and I'm changing the name of the series when we first started and it was Lou and Jim and I we called it uh, Pole Barns Made Easy well I think I've proven the fact that I've made it anything but easy so at this point if you're able to watch this series you can learn from my mistakes don't leave your wood out in the weather to rot don't start your building and then stop although I had some legitimate reasons for stopping I'm not making any more excuses I'm getting the building built uh, so the people that have taken it personally like I've done something to them by not building my building it's not your building it's my building ultimately I'm the one that's going to benefit from that building my viewers will benefit because you'll see me building cool stuff and uh, having all my tools and equipment and where I can attack one vehicle will be awesome but uh, another I hired a couple of guys for a couple of weeks each to work on the building one of them was a very good friend of mine and he took his own life and so I'm thinking I want to get this building up and done and uh, and and I want Lou to be able to watch me working on it today I'm gonna I've already got footage of me getting a lot more done on it I'll start uploading that it'll be something for Lou to watch from where he's at right now and hopefully he'll be able to watch and see the whole thing get done you know he helped me get started and also in upcoming videos you'll find where I found a piece of wood with notes on it from Lou and everything that actually helped me and uh, uh, he needs to watch this today and Lou happy birthday happy we birthday. love you and uh, you'll always be my dad and I, I hope this you get some enjoyment out of this and I hope you get some enjoyment in the future videos there's a lot of struggles ahead you know things got warped and twisted and some of the wood went really bad and some of it had to be cleaned up but we'll get through it we'll get her built we'll get her done and uh, also <laughs> mom and Lou have had the little truck inspector general over there for what's like a month now three weeks three weeks seems like a lifetime but anyway so I spoke to mom about uh, her coming home to mom her to her daddy about Annabella coming home to her daddy and mom said we'll see so that really prompted me to get over there and get some chores done on mom's house and take my dog back for a little while at least a week it has been helpful to have her Nana watching her but uh, the little girl needs to come home with her daddy for a while and uh, we'll split custodial ship custodian ship custody we'll, we'll split the custody and I'll write the contract because that's my dog right my little truck inspector general coming home um, I'm gonna have to make some kind of a little spot for her out there with shade and stuff where she can hang out with her dad while I'm working on the building. Anyways, that's enough rambling on. Classic truck rescue. Peace, Peace out. out. Also on a more, more serious note, uh, if you ever feel like life is overwhelming you too much, trust me, I've been there. Uh, this property uh, had me wore out and to the point where I was ready to throw my hands in there, but I'm not a hands in there throwing up guy when when push comes to shove I'll I'll do what I need to do but if you ever get that way and you're struggling with depression and anxiety or something call somebody call anybody you know call somebody and we'll look up a phone number for a suicide prevention hotline and we'll put that number in here and um, uh, Evan, we love you, and I just I wish you would have called. I really do. Uh, uh, don't think about the people that love you and care about you, and sometimes you don't think they do, but they do. 
and call somebody, even if it's somebody that doesn't like you or that you don't like. If you're going to end everything anyway, call someone up and and tell them what you're thinking, and then tell them off if you want or something. Let somebody know. You you got to let somebody know, right? Because I've had uh, Evans called me up in the middle of the night before for much stupider things, right? And I've responded and helped him out, and and uh, I, to be honest with you, I went. Should I tell him? No. Uh, I just just say I've saved him in the middle of the night before at personal risk, right? So the plane's back, to, so that means we got to go. Well, today's the day, and we're not going up there. We're going over here. Come on, come on. We're going over here. Take a good jet. How you doing, buddy? Oh, you got some new hay. Mmm. Taking a good... Come on, Anna. Come on, you're not a horse. Come on. You missed the squirrel. He went in the bushes. No, he went in the bushes. No, he went in the bushes. Nope, you're too late. Sorry. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Anna, come on. Come on. Gonna take a good... Long, hard look at this mess I got going out here. Uh, I've been putting this off and putting it off, and it is not so much putting it off as, yeah, I've been putting it off. But, uh, I've been, well, I've been healing for one thing, and I feel like I've healed a lot. Uh, I've kept it mowed out here at least, that's good. Got the bucket truck and the crane truck running and working well. I got to get up there. Look, that battery's getting ready to fall off the post. I got to get that winch and three winches and batteries on that side off. Before I do that, I have to nail the truss ends to the posts and put bolts in all the cor corbel blocks. I think that's what they're called. And uh, I have to finish drilling these other posts. So, really, <laughs> I'm lucky this thing's still standing, to be honest with you, but... And another problem is my trusses are out of whack. Over there, they have leaned on me, and I'm going to have to figure out a way to use that crane to push it back into position and hold it in position with straps going to those gable end posts over there. It's not going to be easy and I have some wood to replace and but the very first thing that I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna go get these piles of old materials that yes I should have kept covered and and uh, it should have been on the building already but like oh, I have to go through my wood and I have to see what's usable and what's not what's not usable for the building is still usable for other projects around the property like jets a little barn and things like that but I'm gonna go through all of the materials and a long time ago I was backing that trailer up and the back end of it bottomed out and the stacks slid off of it and I just threw a tarp over it and it was winter and uh, left it like that so I'm gonna go through all that find out what's good what's bad I'm gonna put some makeshift forks on Yunkin my little Kubota tractor and uh, I'm gonna move that trailer probably over here and then I will restack all of the good wood on the trailer and I will properly tarp it maybe I should put it in there will it be in the way hmm I don't think it will. Boy, this whole thing's just leaning. I gotta get it all put back into shape. Anyway, uh, metal's fine, doors are fine. Uh, maybe I should put it under here. This is one of those big decisions. You don't wanna put a big, heavy thing 
in the way right there but I'm my goal is to get the roof on and I don't think I need to be under there with a ladder or anything heck I guess if I needed to yeah I can still get up there if I have to I'm gonna put that trailer in in there because this is getting covered first and that will get my building materials out of the weather I'll be back here we go folks <laughs> uh, the moment I've been dreading but looking forward to at the same time I am going back to work on this building I got some things I gotta fix before I do anything and it just occurred to me how in the middle of getting busy with this thing we were I mean we still got a strap up there and a sheet of plywood that I don't know why it's still up there but it is it's been a couple of years since Lou hasn't been able to walk and now Jim's passed and I just I need to get this done I do um, so I'm just gonna start where I think I should start which is we were taking the winches off and bolting the core the corbel blocks to the posts and I think I still have to drill all those and get the winches off that battery up there is about ready to fall off fortunately uh, the batteries that are off, I checked them with a little device that Kermit left for me. Thank you again, Kermit, for your help and support. And uh, those batteries are still good, so I'll bring one out with me, hook it up to that winch. I believe I was having problems uh, getting that one unhooked for some reason. But, oh no, I didn't want to unhook it until I got the bolts in. All right, we're back on track. Anyways, like I told you, I'm not going to film every single nail being pounded I'm just gonna tell you what I'm doing and then set up the camera on a tripod I told you that in a previous video when I said I was going back to work on the building so uh, like I said I'm gonna go up get all of the corbel blocks corbel blocks that's those guys right there bolted like that one is on down the line get those winches that are still on top of the posts over there off and uh, then once I get those off and all the trusses firmly bolted to the posts I have to go to work on straightening the trusses where they have leaned over time and I've gotten a few tips on how to do that I think it involves using the crane the bucket truck and my tractor but I have to be careful about how I do it and also I have a few boards that need to be replaced anyway I'll be back when I bring the bucket truck over with the remotes for the six winches that we use to raise the sections of building up and I need them just to remove the winches to get the pressure off of them but what I thought was kind of cool is that the batteries are still good in the remotes I don't know how long they'll remain good but it's encouraging hydrate in the harness.
I don't know if I touched on it, but yeah, I did. I think I filmed about the battery falling down. Anyways, the position that I am left in is that I need power to that winch and the remote for that winch. Can you see it? See, this is difficult. All right, that winch, battery fell off. Need to get power to it so I can put some slack in the cable so I can take it out. But before I do any of that, that truss, the end, uh, has to go in so that it's at least flush with the post. So I got an inch or two to go in there. I've got a couple ideas on how to do that. Um, and we'll see if any of them work. <laughs> Uh, but first, before I do any of that, uh, the battery just happened to fall, as luck would have it, on its side. I guess, I guess that was a pretty, there was a pretty good chance of that, wasn't there? Is that plugged in? Yep. So I got power out here, and power over to my temporary pole. And, uh, I'm gonna pop these caps off. Hopefully. Yep. Now... I gotta be careful with these caps too because oh battery acid on the end very nice hey distilled water i might need all that well i can spare just a just a splooge just a splooge i should have a rag out here anywho be careful with these caps because and the reason i'm even bothering to do this oh wow i guess it didn't lose as much water as i thought can you see it folks can you see it yeah we'll just cap that off and then i've got more water for other batteries that might need a little assistance we'll put this on the end in case i overflow uh-oh someone's chooching me that can be good or bad Anyways, I just went and let the girls from Fish and Wildlife in. They're back there doing their final gathering of the traps to get a, they did another day's worth of trapping to get a better, uh, more accurate count of what species and kinds of fish we got out here. And it's been kind of a pretty neat experience, actually. I was very reluctant. To let them on my property and I had a lot of anxiety about it but you know I think they're pretty good people and I think they're out here doing a good thing I don't think they're here to cause any problems for me and uh, they're real happy with the stream and the river and the condition they're in and uh, they say they're great habitats for the fish and the beavers and you know, we got herons and deers and all of them, and it's been a good experience. You know, I had a whole... Ah, I just feel that stuff on my hands. Ooh. Battery has It's not good. I uh, know, it's the whole... It's the... Highly sought after distilled water. You know, most of that sticky that I'm feeling on there is from that tape. Gorilla tape. I might have a rag. Oh, I do have a rag. I keep one under the seat. Of old Yunkin. Sometimes I call him Yunkin. Sometimes I call him Punkin. That's Punkin. That's Punkin number one. This is Yunkin, because he's a young Punkin. That's Tug over there. They are patiently waiting, both of them. And... And God bless those tractors. They helped me so much, so much when we had to move and clear this property. And I have the parts to fix that one. I'll get the parts to fix that one. We get this building up. Uh, they are definitely getting a
Boy, I don't like the way it's doing that. Maybe it needs a little pump of Rooney first. bending all the way down there in the cramped space to lift this heavy thing up. get that battery not really a good place to put it let's go get something done I think I got everything I need oh almost to the winch. Well, I don't, wouldn't say that the truss is resting on that because I, it's not. It's not. So, I think I should get this truss where it's supposed to be first. Yep, that's what we're doing. So my plan my plan I got some stuff to deal with down there folks I got stuff like that on this end to deal with but yes so how oh, that winch almost has to come off I just feel like it's a added safety feature we'll leave it on there so I brought this long board and I'm gonna get down here and get nee, nee. my knees popping don't get old folks don't let it happen oh darn well see now I'm gonna hit that thing I really want this to go sideways there can we try it no I gotta take that winch cable off right, there's no two ways about it 
maybe if I go up here, nope, that's got to come off. Holy cow, the whole building just shook. Oh my God. Please, Lord, don't let this fall down on me. Oh, look at the staples pulling out. Oh. Tom showed up. He's gonna keep an eye on Annabella while I'm up there. And I did successfully move that truss. Remember, it had to come in. Well, actually, the post had to come out a couple of inches. And I've got it flush right there. That's pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get my nail, get the compressor fired up, get my nail gun going, and nail that off and then we'll remove that winch and then all we have to do on this side is go down to the next post and drill the holes that go through the post. Uh, Lou pre-drilled all of my corbel blocks for me and uh, that was very helpful and we'll get those bolted on and get that one nailed off. Looks like that truss may need to come back just a hair. Uh, where is that? Right there. Looks like that post may have to go just a, a hair to the right, but we have a system now for doing that, and we'll just take that block with us and that jack and do the same thing over there. This is encouraging. <laughs> 